Buying new lenses today are flawless. They're super sharp, crystal clear, free of halation, with no chromatic aberration. In the best way possible, these lenses are clinically perfect. But when it comes to our work, we want things to look different than everyone else's. We want it to have character, grit, texture. Maybe we want them to look like our favorite movies. You see, we want our work to feel real. And when it comes to our creative process, we want it to look authentic. But things that are authentic aren't perfect. And that could be a problem with these lenses that have no flaws. They leave this feeling of character to be desired. I think that's why there's so many videos out there explaining why you should buy vintage lenses, whether that's the Helios lenses, old Leica glass, or even the Canon Nifty 50s. So what is it gonna take for me to convince you to get this perfectly imperfect lens? I got this lens from my uncle a few years ago for one of my Canon film cameras. And when I got it, I was blown away by how beautifully made this lens is. It's solid metal and has a great focus ring and it's labeled with these gorgeous focal charts on them. And it has a few tricks up its sleeve that I'm excited to talk about later. And the best part about this lens is that you can pick it up for about 25 bucks. The closer I look at this lens, I realize that it's not even made by Canon, but by a company that you may have heard of before, Sears. Yes, the home appliance store that sells dishwashers and lawn mowers. At one point in history, they made SLR lenses. And to be honest with you, this lens is great. I loved this lens so much that I wanted to start shooting videos with it. So I started looking up ways to make that happen. In order to fit this on my camera, I had to buy an adapter. I got this Velo, Velo, FD to E mount adapter for around 20 bucks, I think. And I'm sure you'll be able to find just about any FD adapter to fit your camera too, whether that's Nikon, Canon, Fujifilm, or Pentax, maybe. And once you get the adapter, this is where the fun begins. This is where your image comes to life. I took this lens out to try to shoot a few different things. And because the focal length is 80 to 200, I mainly am trying to shoot wildlife and walk around stuff. But I think there's a few ways to get clever with this focal length. A unique trick this lens has is its macro feature. You can twist the barrel of the lens and lock it into the macro mode, and you can get actually some great shots. Now, it's not like your typical macro lens where you're able to get really close with the subject because the minimum focus distance for this lens is three feet, which is pretty far, but I was able to switch to this mode and get some really great detail shots. This actually came in handy when I wanted to get some close-up shots of a fire. I was able to stay far enough away without melting the lens in the camera, but still able to get these really cool details in the flames. Obviously you lose the capability of autofocus the minute you use a lens like this, but I honestly think that's a great thing to practice, to not always rely on autofocus because the camera doesn't always know what you're wanting to shoot when you're wanting to shoot it. If you're wanting to improve your filmmaking skills, get an all manual lens or turn off autofocus from time to time to sharpen that skill. I promise it will pay off in the future when your camera fails to autofocus and you need to quickly pull focus on the next shot. Okay, my side rant is over. Something different about this lens is how you zoom in and out. Instead of turning the lens to zoom in and out, you push the focus ring forward and backwards to achieve that zoom. It may seem weird at first, but it actually made it really easy to do quick zooms and it also made it easy to do slow push-in shots for a more cinematic look. Hand holding this lens is, well, <laughs> It's pretty difficult. Thankfully with the Sony cameras, you have this ability to adjust the IBIS settings by adding the focal length you're shooting with. I pretty much just kept this at 200 millimeters the whole time as a way to get more stable image. And even after all of this, I still mainly shot on a tripod. I just love tripod shots. Like they're just great. Like who doesn't love a good tripod shot? So there's definitely some weird things when shooting with this lens that I noticed. And the first thing is that even though there's an aperture ring on the lens, it stays locked off at the lowest aperture, which is F4. I don't know if this is because of the adapter or some electronic component, but I was stuck at F4 the whole time. So naturally to change my exposure, I used an ND filter. And this is where another weird thing was discovered. Because the way the lens is built, the barrel of the lens is one piece. So anytime you would rotate the ND filter, it would also rotate the lens, which would end up pulling focus. To work around this, I would have to hold the lens with one finger and turn the ND filter with the other. It wasn't a huge deal, just made shooting a slower process. But that's something to take note of. Shooting with this lens slows you down. And that's what made it fun. Typically when I'm shooting, everything is so fast and changing rapidly. Slowing down really made me enjoy what I was shooting. 
Now, I could sit here and give you a complete technical breakdown of this lens and tell you that the image isn't as sharp as you'd like it to be, and it has really bad focus breathing, and it feels a little slow and clunky, but I think that's why I find myself still shooting with this lens. It has a character about it that you can't recreate in post. There's halation, green magenta shifts, and the contrast is dull. But even after all these little flaws, I had so much fun shooting with this lens. It has a look to it that I can't explain. It's completely different than what I'm used to, and I love that. There's something cool about getting vintage lenses and throwing them on your new cameras. It breathes new life to the filmmaking process. When you have technical shortcomings, it forces you to think more creatively. Vintage lenses create this look of authenticity, and it makes things like this a perfectly imperfect lens. Hey, if you liked this video, please make sure to like and subscribe for more videos in the future, and we will catch you guys in the next one.